Guys, thank you so much for clicking on The Justin Root Show. Not only am I sitting here with one of my dearest and bestest friends, but someone who is an accomplished singer-songwriter who is killing it right now. Please say hello to my dear friend Leland. Hi. Hi. I have been waiting to say this sentence since I started the show. Really? I was Please welcome former Cheesecake Factory employee. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, let's start there. Wait, what were you going to say? You were here when? When you first started the show. I know. Yeah. You like, you've pressed record Re several the, times on these cameras. That camera. Maybe uh -huh. all of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then your career just kind of went like that. And I'm still sitting here pressing record <laughs> on the cameras. Um, well, let's go back to those Cheesecake Factory days, actually. Okay. I really do want to start that because that's okay. Mississippi, right? It's uh, Nashville at the Green Hills Mall. What the story behind it is how I got the job. Um, I've told you this. Yeah. Tell okay, me. so... I went for the interview, uh, my friend and I, and we were so broke one summer in, in between uh, semesters, and we like got outside at the same time, and I was like, oh my god, how did your interview go? And he said, good, how did yours go? And I was like, good, and he said, great, when did they tell you to come back? And I was like, oh, they didn't. And I said, when did they tell you? He said, oh, they told me to call and schedule my next interview. So I obviously did not make it to that round, so I called anyways, and scheduled my next interview and then ended up getting hired and was not supposed to be. I love that. But I scammed my way to a job at Cheesecake Factory. And how long did you stay there? Uh, I stayed there probably like three months. White pants and everything? And, oh my gosh, it costs like $200 to get going at Cheesecake You had to Factory. buy your own outfit? Yeah, you have to buy everything. White pants and apron and everything? Apron, the, sh the non, uh, non-slip shoes, all of it, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So, okay, I we have been friends now for like, Three or four years, plus three more, add four and multiply <laughs> times two. Yes. I will never forget the second night we hung out and I asked, what do you do? What do you, you know, why'd you move out here? What do you want to do? And you laid out your plan so specifically and you've pretty much nailed them. I wish I could remember what I told you at the time because it was probably, it probably sounded crazy. No, it didn't sound crazy. What it sounded like was someone with ambition and somebody who knew exactly what they wanted. And I have watched you literally achieve your goals and dreams month after month after month. Yeah, it's really nuts. I feel now I'm just in a place where I am really grateful just to like make music with friends. Like mm -hmm. that's all that I feel like I'm doing every day. Yeah. So it's really nice. But yeah, you were there from actually like day one of yeah, moving out here with like no connections. No money, no nothing, and being like, cool, I'm going to get from point A to point B, which point B just means making a living at music, mm -hmm. and I will figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was that long gap in between of figuring it out. You're a kid. You're growing up. You're Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. Southern boy. Mm -hmm. What role is music playing in young Brett's life? Like, like Church. Really? It was church, yeah. Uh, eat, sleep, and breathe. I was singing Christian songs. I was writing Christian songs, praise and worship songs. I was singing in the praise and worship band at my church and, and then, yeah, like choir and musicals and, and uh, everything that a young gay closeted boy should be doing in South Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And who uh, were you looking up to on the radio, on television, you know, outside of church? Uh, I mean, it wasn't until middle school or high school when uh, I discovered like Britney Spears and I would sneak and get home before my family so that I could watch TRL. That's what I was going to ask, was a church going, you know, yeah. member of the church going family, were they out, like, were you allowed to watch any of that? No, they were super apprehensive about any of that, and it was a huge, uh, like, scandal in my house when I told my parents that I didn't even want to go to the same churches, and that I just wanted to go to a different church. That was something, and then it was something else when I told them I didn't want to sing Christian music um, for myself. But now, I mean, they're amazing and super supportive, and come to shows, and yeah, it's, it's really good now. Wow. And so, you know, you're, listening, you're watching Britney, you're sneaking Britney, mm -hmm. but you're also singing in church. Mm -hmm. Is there a part of you that is, I'm going to move to another city, I'm going to do this, it's going to be my life, this is going to be my, my entire career, or how did that ha come about? Um, I mean, I knew that I was going to leave Mississippi. Uh, I do enjoy going back. There's a certain charm to it with an undertone of um, racism and homophobia. Uh, it's no secret how behind, you know, Mississippi is in certain ways, but you just hope that the next generation is, is like more aware sure. than previous. Was there a moment for you, like an actual moment 
where you realized, I can actually leave Mississippi. I can actually get in my car. I can actually get out of here. Yeah, I mean, it was when I discovered or heard about Belmont, which is where I went to college in Nashville. And my mom was so smart because I wanted to go to NYU. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just want extreme, you know, Mississippi to New York. I want extreme. I want, I know I want to be in New York. And yeah, my mom drove me to Nashville to go visit the college one weekend. And she just planned it perfectly. It was when they were doing one of their big pop concerts and I was sold. And did you have anyone like giving you advice on what to do in the music business? Or is this just no. stuff you're kind of piecing together on your own? You're just piecing it all together. At the time, like the biggest band from where I was from was Three Doors Down. And so I remember a big moment for the McLaughlin household and like myself was when I think their manager came over to our house to listen to songs that I had written. However, it was just instrumentals. I did not have any lyrics <laughs> or any, I wasn't singing. So I was just playing instrumentals and I think he was like, what? the fuck did I get myself into yeah, yeah. and looking and like my friends were so sweet and like came over and cleaned the house before and we went to a three doors down concert and I think I also peaked in Mississippi when I opened for Jesse McCartney at the mall oh uh, that was like I was so I think it was like 13 and entered a radio contest really mm -hmm. that had to be huge to you I think there, yeah I think there were at least 30 people there <laughs> 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 Unreal. <laughs> Do you remember? Well, so what was your very first professional gig? Like the first gig you did as a songwriter that you got a check from? Something else equally as uh, incredible was not the Miss Mississippi pageant, but the Mrs. <laughs> Mississippi pageant that happened at the Grand Casino. Where, where did you play? And I didn't even know you were married at the time. <laughs> it was my first marriage. Okay. Um, I was the performer with my band. Uh, during while the judges deliberated and tallied scores and then I think we got written up in the newspaper about it it was a really show-stopping performance literally like please stop the show. yeah yeah someone came out <laughs> yeah. uh, all right so you did you graduate from college? college yeah did you graduate or yeah. okay so you graduate you're done and it's LA or bust yeah it? yeah um, why LA so I signed a publishing deal my senior year of college with EMI Music Publishing, okay. and it was out of LA, so as soon as I was done, I had to pack up and move out here. Because if you want to do pop music, you really need to be in LA, or you need to be in London, um, or New York, but really LA is, is the center. And I know you get asked LGBT questions all the time, especially because you're working with you know a hugely prominent mm -hmm. LGBT artist right now, Yeah. but was there any part of you that thought life was going to be different in LA? Oh, completely. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I going to Nashville, I was, I knew I was like, oh my God, I'm ready to like date boys. I'm ready to like, not, I wasn't out when I first went to college, but I just knew that if I was going there, then there were going to be people like me there mm -hmm. um, who came from sort of a religious conservative background. Then we just sort of like figured out, you know, you would like eye someone and be like, wait, are, are you, are you, it, it, you know? Um, and then LA is just, or West Hollywood specifically, it, there's such a high concentration of uh, LGBT people sure. that uh, I just knew it was going to be so great and um, yeah, it's been it's been awesome. And moving out here where you can feel like maybe more included or accepted, yeah. does that allow your creativity to just go into a completely different it, direction or did it for it you? It does. I mean, I didn't see my career trajectory being so um, centered around LGBT subject matter, LGBT narratives and artists. I just, I didn't even think about that. And, and also as an artist myself, at the time, I was nowhere near being comfortable singing about, like, singing about boys. Uh, so I, I didn't really think about that. I didn't think about how uh, being gay was going to open up an entire community and have this sense of community among other artists who were like myself, whether, wherever they fall in the LGBTQ community. So um, that was something that was a bit of a, a really, like, pleasant surprise. Nice. And you have written for just incredibly huge artists. I mean, Troy Sivan, mm -hmm. Ariana Grande, mm -hmm. Dea, mm -hmm. Andy Grammer, Selena Gomez, and Ali X, mm -hmm. who I absolutely adore. Me Love too. This. this is amazing. I'm in Dea, mm -hmm. right here. I'm just going to hold these up in front of me. Yeah, later. I have to return them, so please. <laughs> <laughs> when, you know, you can answer this about any one of these people. What comes first with importance? When you sit down and you think, okay, I'm going to write this song. Do you want it to be the sound? 
Do you want it to be the meaning behind the lyrics? Mm-hmm. Do you want it to be political? Do you want it to be a good bop? Do you just want people to have fun? Dance? Yeah. What, like, what is the forefront question. of your brain? That's a really good question. It is different for every single artist, every single song, and every session. So I, my job as the writer is to help translate whatever the artist is feeling into something, let's say that they want something that could work on radio. Then my job is to figure out, okay, what does a radio song sound like for you? Not just how can we make you and place you on something that could work on radio. It's how do we make your version of a radio hopefully hit or just a song that streams well or just a song that that allows people to, to find this artist. I think before I ever had a song on the radio, my focus um, was just like, get a hit, write a hit, write a hit, write a hit. And where now my focus is just write good songs for those specific artists. Don't think about, is this gonna get on the radio? If people connect with it, and if then it'll, it might end up there. If not, it's okay. You know, songs have lives, whether or not they become a radio hit or whether or not they end up in a commercial or a movie or get synced for uh, a clothing brand or something, you know? So they always sort of find their way. Right now I am uh, have been writing songs with Carly Rae Jepsen, who I love, yes. and Charlie XCX, who I love, and I was fans of them before, and their music before we ever worked together. So I am down to adapt to whatever they want to do, wherever they are in their career, because, you know, so, some artists don't want to make the same type of song they were making two years sure. ago. They want to evolve. So it's my job to evolve with them. When I met Sabrina Carpenter, uh, we had our first top 40 hit together last year. You know, she's already had three albums out at this point, and I'm meeting her at a very specific place in her career where she's transitioning from being on Disney shows to being a, like, queen of pop. And so I am meeting her at a, at a very, like, pivotal moment where we get to figure out the sound that is going to transition her from people seeing her as a kid to people seeing her as a woman who is making competitive pop and as a respected artist. Yeah. So it's really fun to meet people in certain parts of their career and and help them evolve and evolve with them. I mean, Troy and I have very much done that, you know? Yeah. We've evolved as like baby songwriters to, uh, I mean, you know, Troy singing on the Ariana song, but he and I still celebrate having an Ariana song together, even though it's a duet with her and him, which is even crazier. Does somebody higher up maybe in your management team or something, come to you and say, we want to pair you with this person? Or do you actively seek out, like these people you're mentioning, do you, who you're fans of, do you find Alex and say, hi, my, you know, I want to work with you, or are you guys paired together? It's every, all of the above. You know, what's so nice is about having songs out, other artists are fans of them. Mm-hmm. And so before I had any like big songs or anything, it really was cold calling. It really was cold emailing meeting someone out at a party and being like, we, I would love to write with you, you know? And you know how that can come across sometimes. Sure. You're like, I need to yeah, write yeah, with yeah, you. Yeah. And, and, I need uh, you to be on my show. Uh-huh. I need you to come up. Yeah, yeah you, know exactly. that's, you know what that's like. Um, <laughs> so, but now I'm so thankful to have songs that other artists are fans of, especially with um, Troy and I uh, did a song called My, 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 which is the first single from this chapter and uh, that song especially like it's the response has been insane yeah. with Taylor Swift mm-hmm. and she sang the song with Troy at the Rose Bowl and just told him uh, and openly about how like that's one of her favorite favorite songs and you were there right I mean I saw the Instagram yeah right? um, what's that like for you little Brett little little baby Brett it's just crazy it's really cool it um, I was standing with Troy's mom at the front of the stage and we were both just crying and like there are certain moments where it's overwhelming but also afterwards nothing feels different or nothing changes. It's a really strange thing because I just try to remember the moments and feel grateful to have those friendships and those experiences. So there's still that part of you that's still a fan. Oh my god. How do you keep that alive? Uh, By listening to songs without listening to them with a critical ear. Um, finding certain acts that I'm just purely a fan of. Because I don't want to be in a car and every time a song comes on be like, that pre-course could have been better, that whatever could have been better. It's no fun to listen to music like that. And then a lot of times I'll just like drive with no music. What I usually revert to is like Edith Piaf or The Sound of Music soundtrack or just something older. That's your like palette cleanser? Mm -hmm. Or listen to my own songs. 
<laughs> Which some there are like for every good song, there's probably 50 bad ones. I've been in your car about 900 times. I'm I think we've so only sorry. listened to your music. I'm so sorry. I think we've only listened to your I'm music. I'm so sorry. I think that's so much. And that's not, that's, that's a very true statement. Where's the industry right now in terms of like, how cutthroat is it? I mean, I, I don't, I don't really know. Like, I just know that my bubble is thankfully really small and I am like working on projects that I love. I don't feel like I'm climbing over anyone else to get to anything. I don't feel like anyone's climbing over me. I just want to work on projects that I love with people that I love and I am always open to like meeting new writers and new artists and artists that don't have a record deal and artists that do have a record. I mean, I want to work with everyone from like the person who is like buzzing on Spotify right now to Dolly Parton and everyone in between, you know, so. Um, who are some of the in between? Because that is a question I had for you. Like who, who are some career goal people you'd like to work with? Dolly. Yeah. Um, I would love to work with Robin. I would love to work with Elton John. I don't even know if he collaborates with other other people besides Bernie, but what put that idea in my head was um, Elton interviewed Troy for Out Magazine. And so he and Elton did a phone call and Elton interviewed him. And Troy brought up, which like this interview made me cry, but it was uh, Troy brought me up as his writing partner and related it to Bernie being Elton's writing partner. And Elton said, you know, we've been writing songs now for 50 years. And Troy said something like, so that's, that's our goal. <laughs> My God, it feels like it. But no, uh, that's our goal is, is to write for 50 years. And, um, and Elton just talked about the, how just different important things to keep in mind with you and your writing partner. And yeah, it was just really special. So um, I just want to work with great artists. I, one of our mutual friends, Rufus Wainwright, mm -hmm. we, we wrote not too long ago. Oh, you did? Amazing. Mm -hmm. I would love to work with uh, Lady Annabelle. Um, um, Janet Jackson yeah. is like, uh, so I mean, I went to see her in Nashville in December and it was one of the best shows I've ever seen. Not because it was, oh, she's good at her age. It's, wow, these girls need to watch out. She's absolutely killing it. Okay, so this is kind of a, probably a little bit of a Sophie's Choice question. Okay. And don't think in terms of which one of my close artist friends am I going to offend by saying this. Okay. Do you have a favorite song that you've written? One that is just like, you had to put it in a, in a uh, time capsule to be opened a hundred million years from now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do think it's uh, the good side. Um, it, we were all like sort of crying when we wrote it and it's a Troy song and we just wrote it on acoustic guitar. It feels, I hope it feels like a timeless song. And that song specifically, I've had more people reach out about that song. And I'm most proud of that song because I feel like it really does tell a story. The structure of the song is different for most songs. It feels like stanzas, um, you know, um, feels like a poem as opposed to the structure of a pop song. And while I do love writing pop, this song just really captured everything we wanted to say from the tone of the song, lyrically, instrumentally, I got to uh, play the piano on the song. Um, yeah, it's just really special. And I do think that if like, aliens came down and like found the song a hundred years from now that they hopefully like it. We know that most songwriters, you know, usually draw from, you know, personal experience, mm -hmm. whether that's heartbreak, horrible breakup, betrayal, or even the opposite, which is, you know, love mm -hmm. and you're in your most euphoric state. You're just so happy. Do you go from a lyric you have or do you go from a beat, a melody? Uh, it's both. So sometimes when Troy and I did My My My, we were in Stockholm and he uh, had this like beat in his head that he was loving and I had phrases out, written out, um, depending on the session, depending on the artist, I'll wake up in the morning and come up with some titles that just to put me in that headspace. And so for Troy, I had like Troy titles and something was like my, my, or my, my, my. And, um, as they were working on that beat, uh, I sort of was just like pitching different lyric ideas. And when I said my, 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 Troy was like, wait, and we sort of ran with that for a second, figured out what that meant to us and what that meant to him in that moment and put a story behind it. So it's really, it all comes at different moments. And this is your second album with Troy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, amazing. Yeah, you were there when like we met and when Tyler introduced us and yeah. Yeah, it's just, I can't believe how far you guys have come. It's crazy. It is crazy. Okay, young boy or young girl, they're in Mississippi. They're in Nashville. They're dying to get into the real world. They're dying to get into this industry. What's your advice for them? Find a community and also just be really good at what you do. You know, I have an artist that I am developing with our friend Dale mm -hmm. 
and we've been working with and you know she is amazing but also is going to be even better so it's not like people are looking to find someone who's polished and ready to go you obviously get better over time so i would just say be really good at, at what you do and study your craft and don't try to find shortcuts just actually i feel like because i really my career has not happened overnight mm -hmm. um i encourage people to like you know find a similar path and just whatever it is you have to do to get from point a to point b just do it also now you can reach out to people that you are fans of and like you know people reach out to me i'm not um i'm not like untouchable you know like you can find me on twitter and instagram and everything and no, you're not. <laughs> um and like people can reach out to me you know now you can look to your peers and usually ask them for advice you know i do the same thing with with people that i look up to you know, as an LGBT artist, you just write, you just mm -hmm. perform, you just live. But do you realize the great work that you're doing personally and that Troy's doing? Like, do you realize for the gener like my generation, like I grew up, well, is George Michael singing about a girl? Maybe. Well, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe. I've heard rumors. This is just so authentic, yeah. unapologetic, and genuine. Do you realize, like, the good you're doing for the community? No. Um, it is makes me feel weird and happy and emotional, like, to think about. Because I do feel like if I had uh, an openly queer, confident songwriter to look up to on social media when I was just starting out, I feel like I could have gotten uh, more comfortable with myself as a creative sooner. It takes seeing reactions from people um, and seeing meeting people in person and hearing what they say to really register the impact that I think especially someone like Troy is having. It doesn't even register to me now to not see him do something that is pushing the envelope or that is because he is so artistic and, and so sure of himself and knows exactly what he wants and who, see, who he is uh, as an artist and as a person. Um, I'm just like, oh, of course Troy's going to make like an amazing gender fluid video where he uh, is basically in drag and in this gorgeous floral dress and in and, and a f like full face of makeup. I'm like, of, of course he's doing that. Like, that's what... That's what we're trying to do. I did an, an interview with um, Gay Times uh, and they were saying how everyone in the office now in the UK says like, I'm going to like bloom for this person tonight or something, you know? And, um, so I just find that funny and amazing. But no, I, I, I hope to look back like 15, 20 years from now and I know I'll be really proud, but I hope that there are people like young queer teens who are watching this content and, and that it's really helping them. Let's talk about Drag Race. Okay. I mean, dream come true? I mean, I've signed like 20 NDAs. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, I guess- Hi, I, Tom. To those, yeah, hi, Tom Campbell. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've worked on four seasons now and then was a guest on All Stars 3. You and Freddie, our dear friend mm -hmm. Freddie Scott. Yes. Um, is it fun? Is it fun? Is it work? Surreal. Yeah. Um, it is work, but it's the best kind of work. I mean, to me, it's like Saturday Night Live or Paul's Drag Race. What it has become is so unbelievable. Have you ever seen a show grow like that? Never. Better and better and better and bigger and bigger every mm -hmm. single season. It's incredible. Yeah. So I'm just so grateful to be a part of what I consider an amazing family. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I get to write songs called Is There an Anal Option? Um, and I get to recruit all of my friends. Well, you sang that in church though, right? I, I started singing that in church, yes. <laughs> Different words. Is there an angel option? <laughs> nice! That's why they yeah. pay you the big bucks! <laughs> um, but no, it's a dream job and anytime I get a call to write something for Drag Race, I'm just super grateful. And when they get to the musical part of Drag Race, mm -hmm. that's usually, there's about, like, what, six, seven, eight left? Well, it's, it depends. Yeah, it depends. Because this last time, I think there were a lot. There were a lot, start. which is my favorite. It's so much work um, because, you know, mine and Freddie's job is to not only make it funny, but to make it equally, uh, equally, as, equally as funny so that each queen has a fair shot at winning that challenge. Mm -hmm. And, for example, for Bad Girls of Herstory, not only did it have to be historical, it had to be comedic, and then it all had to transition well. And then you wrote the um, Kardashian musical, mm -hmm. too, right? 
which can we talk about? I think so. Did? Why not? Yeah. No, your catering job. Yeah, I catered uh, Kim's wedding to Chris Humphreys and like had a little moment with her and um, and then got to play the voice. Uh, I wrote Kardashian the musical and then also got to play the voice of Kourtney Kardashian and we got feedback from the sisters and they loved it. What kind of feedback? I, th I think you can desist. Oh my god, I know. Yes, that's what it was. <laughs> um, they loved it so much they want it gone. Um, no, I, I just think they said it was hilarious. That's amazing. So yeah, I just hope to like keep working on it and uh, and work with like the World of Wonder team and drag queens as much as I can. All right, we've come to the end of my show. As you know, you've probably never seen it, but I do this little <laughs> either or thing. Um, potato skins or mozzarella sticks? Mozzarella sticks. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Board I'm up at six. I know, it's yeah. disgusting. Board games or video games? Oh, board games. Crushed ice, cubed ice. Crushed. Sex or food? Food. Tattoos or piercings? Tattoos. Glasses or contacts? Glasses. Fiction or nonfiction? Ooh, nonfiction. Personal chef, personal trainer. Personal trainer. Chipotle or Cheesecake Factory? <gasps> I know, this is like a Sophie's choice for you. Oh, Cheesecake Factory. Honey mustard or barbecue sauce? Ooh, honey mustard. Morning sex or night sex? Morning. Grape or cherry? Ooh, cherry. Hot coffee or iced coffee? Iced. Comedies or thrillers? Thrillers. Okay, I don't want you to go into a panic attack over this one. Just breathe. breathe. Bread or bread. <laughs> Real Housewives or the Kardashians? Oh. Oh. I know. Wow. Um, and they're all watching. Oh my god. I will say... Oh, I'm gonna say Real Housewives, but specifically of New York. Okay. Who? Favorite? Oh, I mean, Sonia Morgan is okay. just an icon. Okay. LA days or LA nights? Oh, LA days. Dressing up or keeping casual? Casual. Bicycles or motorcycles? Bicycles. Gym or outdoor exercising? Gym. A job you love, I think I know this, a job that you love or a job that pays a lot? A job that pays a lot. No, I'm kidding. A job that I love. <laughs> Pajamas or sleeping nude? Nude. Blondes or brunettes? Uh, I would say blondes, but I only have dated brunettes. Hero or the villain? Villain. Ooh. Starbucks or an independent coffee shop? Independent coffee shop, but I live next to a Starbucks. Stevie Nicks or Stevie Wonder? Oh, Stevie Nicks. Thank you. Okay. God, you look a little hesitant. I was going to have to pick you off the couch and said the other <laughs> one. Um, I cannot thank you enough for coming on here. Thank you. I love watching your insane ascent into career superstardom. Um, where can everyone find you? Leland? You're Leland everywhere, right? Yeah, Leland official on Twitter because the other guy won't give it to me. Um, <laughs> and then just Leland on Instagram. Okay, so everyone has to get... Uh, where, where would you like everyone to get your music? Is there, is there a place yeah, that... Like Spotify, Spotify and Apple. And Apple, yeah. those are the best. All right, mm -hmm. great. Well, um, thank you guys so much for watching.